guys, Shannon here with Got to Go Prepared. Welcome back. Uh, been a few weeks, crazy weather, crazy work schedule. We all uh, still have to go to work. I am going to show you a little idea on a forum I looked at a while back and read about and wanted to show you, to my viewers, uh, how to make a small alcohol stove. Uh, the alcohol stoves, there's different kinds. This one I made is very small. I don't even know if it'll weigh anything. I mean, fractions of an ounce. Um, very small. Uh, and uh, can boil water in a small kettle I have in about 11 minutes. Um, but I want to show you what I did. I'm not going to go through every step and do a full tabletop uh, show you every step to do, but I'm going to talk you through it. And explain it. I think most of you are uh, pretty smart and will get what I'm saying and do it. If not, you can throw some comments. I'll be happy at the bottom and I'll be happy to uh, answer those questions. First of all, it's very inexpensive. So if you like a cheap stove that works, you're at the right place. First of all, I took the wrappers off of these before I realized that I didn't have it to show. Well, I'm going to tell you what this is. This little can here. As you can see is about it's not even as big as my palm is a potted meat can now if you ever watched the movie sling blade you remember he liked potted meat so you go over to the meat section at walmart you can get a can of potted meat for 33 cents uh you can eat it at your own risk or you can dump it out for 33 cents and give it to your cat or dog uh small can um weighs hardly nothing really and this little small can here, which you can see is very small and fits perfectly inside this with just a little bit of give. This is a tomato paste can. This is a Walmart brand tomato paste can, 33 cents also at my area of Walmart. So these two items, 66 cents. And you may have them in your cabinet. Um, the next thing I got, this is a little bit more expensive, and this is a small one, and uh, in the form somebody mentioned, and I didn't have time to look or to check the cost or anything, but you can look. You can also possibly, somebody said, get a welder's blanket. If you're a welder or familiar with a welder's blanket, uh, you know what that is. You may have one in your garage or find one at a yard sale. Um, but what this is, and you can see where I've already, already cut it, this is what it looks like. You can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's a pipe welder's. You hang it behind so you can it'd be in the pipe section where they are welding pipe and it's a heat blanket, a little small piece with little rings in it. They vary in price from 10, 15, 20. I mean, get online, you probably find one cheaper. Uh, if you know somebody has some of this stuff, you can just see if they'll let you have it or find it at a yard sale. Uh, it's just a flame retardant thick piece of wool cloth. I think it's good for 2,500 degrees. So what you want to do first is you want to clean both these cans out really well. And take the top off this one, the potted meat can, and then take a pair of uh, pliers like I did. These are the cutters, but take a pair of pliers. And you want to mash this all around because it's got a sharp edge on the inside when you take the top off. You want to mash it where it's not sharp and then on the tomato paste can you want to cut both sides out so you can uh, see through it the next thing you want to do is you want to put this inside like this and you want to measure approximately one inch from the top now on mine when I measured one inch from the top it was the top little ridge it's got the little ridges in it it was the top ridge. So what I did is I take a Sharpie and I draw a line around that top edge. And then I took my clippers, my cutter, metal cutters, 10 snips here. And I started to cut down and around until I had it smooth in there. And it stuck up one inch above. So you can see this is the finished one. It sticks out one inch above and fitted down in there. And then I took this cloth and I rolled it around the tomato paste can. 
until I got it matched up and I cut that piece out. And what I wanted this to do is to be just about the height of the potted meat can. So when it fit in here, I wrapped it around and fit it in here, that it looked like this. And when I got it done, it stuck up just barely. And you can take something and just poke it down in their edges a little bit. And you'll notice I've painted this with a uh, stove paint. And that's your, your option if you want to do that. I just painted mine with a, a stove paint, the bottom part. This part will blacken itself just by burning. So once you have that tucked in, all down in there and your tomato paste can sitting in then you want to take what I used was a small punch now you can paper hole punch and I punched two small holes you can see those on either side because if I set a kettle or a pot on top of this the seal is going to force it not to do right so you want the two little air holes to let some heat out of that now I'm doing this inside. You know, it's always crazy weather this time of year. Um, can't wait for it to get warm. We can get back outside and do some things. But then what you want to do is use what I've got in this bottle is uh, heat. It is the yellow bottle of heat, which I have and did not bring it upstairs with me. It's a little yellow bottle of heat that you pour in to, as a uh, fuel line uh, defroster. And it's methanol. It's what in it. You want the yellow bottle, not the red bottle. The red bottle's got methanol in it too, but the red bottle uh, seems to smoke a little bit more than this. This burns very, very clean. And all I did was put it in a, uh, another bottle, a squeeze bottle I had uh, for transporting. Um, so this is the yellow bottle. Get them at Walmart in the automotive section. It says heat on it. Uh, in my Walmart, it's on the bottom shelf, and you can buy them individually for about a buck forty-three, or you can buy a four-pack. Uh, I already had some because I keep that from the winter. You may already have some in your garage as well. Uh, it's very flammable, so be careful. Uh, of course, any and all these things you want to do at your own risk, and, and be careful and take safety precautions when you're doing it. Um, the other thing I have sitting here, you can see, this is a chicken can, a piece of chicken, like like tuna fish, but it's the chicken. And this is a soup can. And I just made the same thing. Of course, this is not big and long enough to wrap around this, so I'm gonna investigate more on the um, welder's blanket and see if I can make a larger version of that stove. This is a little heavier, but same principle. But to show you on a larger scale, when you cut this one, make sure it's even and you may need to even these whole this edge out because you want this to sit in here flat this one needs some work because it's not completely level you don't want your pot sitting at an angle also before you put this together the part that you cut off that's sitting in the tomato paste can sitting in the potted meat can you want to take your uh, punch and you want to punch at least one on one side and one on the other a half a hole. So put your clippers about halfway over and clip a half size hole so it'll be like a half half moon shape little cut on the end. And what that does is allows the fuel to leak up underneath into the and soak in a little bit more into this so it'll burn better. Now I'm going to light this but I'm going to try to put it out fairly quick because I'm indoors of course and don't want the uh, smell so to show you how this thing lights now I'm gonna run this around the edge of that just a little bit to get it started and just put a little in that in there and I think I'm gonna have to find a little better bottle this one wants to drip just a hair I'm gonna set this long way away from any combustible materials, which is a good idea. And I'm gonna light this. Hope you can see this flame. It is burning. I'm gonna get up and see if I cannot uh, get you closer to see the flame. Adjust the camera. I think you can see that blue flame right there. At least I can see it in my viewfinder. And burns very, very well. 
Well, I paused it to go get a pot. So you want to take a pot or a bowl or something you have if you're out and about, take your cook pot and you can smother it and save some of the fuel. Uh, so maybe you might get another uh, pot out of it. So that cuts off the oxygen uh, and we'll smother it out. This thing actually cools pretty quick. It's still warm to the touch, but if you're outside and it's uh, cool weather, that thing, when I first tested it outside um, the other day, it cooled off very rapidly uh, and it burns very, very well. I actually just set a kettle pot on top of it and once I did, the flame just come all the way around it and had the kettle pot of water bubbling in about six minutes and we had a decent little bowl in, in 11 minutes enough to uh, cook any dehydrated food but um again that's a little alcohol stuff and it doesn't weigh anything i mean it's so light you can take this and drop it inside your cook pot and get a uh, a smaller bottle to pour your fuel into because it doesn't take much to um to burn and, and get your uh water bowl into to that quick so if you're somewhere you don't want to build a wood fire i, I like to have a, a a secondary way to just either build a wood fire to have a fire for uh, cooking that way as well too to keep warm uh keep unwanted pests away what have you but uh just another backup way to get some water boiling uh rapidly there uh, again potted meat can tomato paste can and a small pipe welding square. You can find in the pipe section at Lowe's or Home Depot or online. Um, I'll put the name of this in the description because uh, it's escaping me at this moment. And uh, well, through the magic of video and YouTube, here is the bottle of fuel heat. Yellow, not the red, yellow. And it is called a flame protector. It looks like this. So there you go. We got both those things covered so I don't have to type a lot of mess in the descriptions. Also, this is the small uh, the kettle I use, which is a pretty good sized kettle that I put on here. And you can see it fits on there just nice and that holds quite a bit of water um, this is a kettle found at a yard sale uh, my mother actually found it um, thought I could use it for camping it's got a plastic handle and plastic lid this is actually glass but what I was gonna do is take this off and replace it with a wire handle and this off with maybe a piece of wood or cork uh, and have a small kettle there again potted meat or uh, I think there's some small pet food cans that are maybe cat food yeah cat, I think there's cat food can it's almost the same size or maybe the same size if you have a cat you can check tomato paste can make sure it's tucked down in then you should have that heat is your fuel I haven't tried any other fuel but I'm sure other fuels will work um, high percentage alcohol may work um, you can try that, try some different ones. I haven't tried them all yet. I uh, already had some heat, so uh, that was mentioned in the forum, so I used it. I have built a small alcohol stove out of the soda cans. Um, I had a problem getting mine to relight a third time. I did it the second time, and you have to seal it on the Coke can one, so you can't get back in to do anything else without tearing it apart. So I'm going to redo one of those and, um, and see how it works. But I really, really like this one a lot. So um, there you go. Hope this helps. Cool little inexpensive, very cheap. Um, like I said, this is the most costly item. And if you get uh, a buddy or whatever to go in with you, you can reduce the cost. You could probably get maybe four or five of these stoves out of that one piece of cloth. Uh, if my... Uh, brother is watching this and calls me later and tells me that he uh, watched this and can give me some detail this second one I got I'm gonna build it and give it to him uh, just my little incentive to make sure he's watching haha <laughs> uh, he, he's real busy so uh, I give him a hard time sometimes uh, you know how brothers do the last thing I'd like to mention is 
there's a lot of um, good movies out there, and if you're like me, I love movies about survival, or pretty much if it's about survival, I'm watching it, or if it's outdoors, I'm watching it, or if there's a good gunfight or a sword battle or, or an archery battle of some sort, I'm watching that movie. I always have been that way. But today I'm going to feature uh, a movie that I've loved for a long time since I was a kid. Uh, my dad turned me on to it. This is Jeremiah Johnson. It's an old movie. You can get it on DVD, VCR, if you still got one of those. I actually have it on both. Uh, Robert Redford. Um, he leaves society and decides to become a trapper, if you haven't seen this before. Awesome movie. Some little nuggets all through it on survival. Uh, some for survival skills that he gets taught by a, uh, a, uh, a guy along the way. And uh, Awesome movie. Highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, watch it again. I probably once it well, at least watch it once every year. I just like it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for um, tuning in, sharing, and subscribing. And uh, I'll come back next time. I'll have another uh, video pick hopefully for you, and some more good ideas on um, some survival gear, outdoor gear, backpacking gear. I don't know. We'll have something. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.